According to Oxford English Dictionary, a leader is someone that leads a group of people, a country, or an organization. On that note, I welcome you to one on one today. I have Tony Mokwe Dada. My guest on the program today is a leader who was born on 11th of October 1958. He is the chairman, CEO and managing director, Citywise Petroleum and Gas. He hails from Alapara Oje in Ibadan, Northeast Local Government. He resides in Edo Local Government, which is now Edo Omi Apata Local Development area. He is a chartered accountant, a financial economic expert, a tax expert, and he was trained in the UK. He worked in senior position for 15 years in the UK. He is a politician and he used to be a Scottish chairman of UP Head in the year 1982 to 1985. He joined CPC in 2008 he was the pioneer senatorial candidate in 2011 election. He came third during that election. After the merger of CPC and ACH, he became a member of APC. He was the senatorial candidate in the 2014 election, I mean the primaries now, which he lost. Now he is still a member of the All Progressive Congress Party. He is none other than Elder Femi Olaure. Good day, sir. I hope your coming here wasn't stressful. No, not at all. Okay, now, um, straight to my questions without missing words. How do you recognize a good leader? Or should I say who is a good leader? Well, um, a good leader is not someone says what they will not do. Hmm. Someone who says what they the, will not do. All marks of a good leader is integrity. Hmm. Someone who does not speak empty words, vain words. Someone who knows that people are following him, that he's at the forefront of our watch. So he's mindful of what he says. And he says what he means. And he means what he says. And um, you will see leader the ability to carry the followers along all the time. Okay. To set the vision ahead so that the people know where they go. Alright. Now, as you've said, do you think Nigeria has good leaders with the definition of a leader that you gave for you? Well, um, for now, we have, yes, we do have good leaders. It's not that uh, they are probably not uh, in public service. They're probably they probably not in public service. Yes, uh, the majority of them are in the private sector. Okay, okay. Now, um, I'm not talking about the private sector now. I'm talking of public service. Do you think we have good leaders? We have some. Potentially good leaders. We have some potential. But the promotion leader. is very low. Okay. In 100, maybe you can single out about seven. About seven. Yes. So that means we have seven percent out of a hundred percent. Yes. Wow, seven percent. Which means Nigeria is really suffering. Okay. Now, aspiring for a political post, do you feel? people should know who they want to vote for. Because we've seen cases of people coming from the UK, coming from the US, and you know, people that live far and here, and they come around and be like, hey, I want to be a senator, I want to be a governor. Do you think people should know their attributes and characters before casting their votes? Mm. That's a good question. You know, let's say I live in the UK, or I live in US, I live in 
array of places and I come home to vie for a political post. Do you think, or should I say, do you feel people should get to know their um, intended leaders' attributes and characteristics before casting their votes? It is quite essential. Because beyond the vote, the die is cast. You are now stuck with a character that you may not have proven uh, until the expiration of your time. Uh, so it's essential for people to go through the characters, to sift through them, to sniff through them. And that is why forums like this uh, do exist. And you see that even in uh, developed plans, they bring all the aspirants to a center point and use questions to draw them out. They get the code inside them. They get if they have something to offer. They are able to prove them publicly. And because they are facing the public, and most of the questions are spontaneous. They don't have pre-knowledge of questions. Whether they have called or not, we show. Okay. And people will be able to see whether these people are substantial enough to lead to us. To be their leader. Okay, now, I want to narrow it down to you now. Now, narrowing it down to you, you live in Lagos and partly in Ibadan. Do you feel people really know you, considering the fact that you lost in the primary election that came about in 2014, you said earlier. I mean, your business is probably in Lagos, not anybody. Okay. So do you feel people really know you? Do you feel they know you, they know your attitudes, they know your attributes for them to like vote for you? Now let's look at the fact that you were not able to get the senatorial ticket in 2013. 14. 2014, pardon me. So do you think the people really knew you? Because I'm trying to look at it. If they had known, if they knew your attributes, you probably would have gotten the ticket. Then. Well, uh, you are saying two different things. Uh, you are mixing the public with the party machinery. The party machinery is the one that determines who gets the ticket. Mm. The public is what determines who wins at the election. Okay. So let's separate it. Um, in terms of whether I live in Lagos uh, and I'm contesting in your state. Uh, it's a normal uh, future of life. Even in private sector, people stay in California and then jets in the morning to take us to work and come back maybe at weekend, maybe after every two weeks. But their community will know because what brings you together in the community will be the residence association. If you're a Christian, your church, mm. you're a Muslim, your mosque. Yeah. So that is the interface into society. Okay. So they will know you, or they should know you. It's when you keep to yourself and you ignore the people around you, or the people you are going to meet, and that's when you are more commodity. All right. So thank you very much for that, sir. Now, which brings me to my next question. Now, as you said, a good leader, the elder Femi Olauri, do you think you possess? the qualities of a good leader? Um, I would say very much so. Very, very much so. Can you let us into some of your so, attributes? Okay. Um, first, I am very, very resourceful. Mm. Um, if you want me to roll out what I intend to do for your state or for Nigeria for the next 20 years, I have it here without referring to a book. Without referring to a book. I love that. Because uh, it's uh, an innate It's an innate thing. In principle. Mm. So I don't need to go and copy this or that. That's number one. So with that, you can take into the first feeding into you, feeding into them. Okay. That's very important because most of what we have today are people who copy policies left, right and center because they have not gone through it. They can implement. And that's why we have all these great projects, all these on development, all over the place. Mm. Whoever is going to be there, going to be it, or be sound, will be to hold much, analyze much, and then put them into action. That's the one thing. Okay. Apart from the intellectual base, you must have a strong spiritual inclination. Mm. So you must you believe have intellectual, spiritual. You, have, you must believe that you are a creation to serve humanity. And there's a creator there. Mm. With that, you have conscience. 
<laughs> you have concern. You have care. And those are the elements that go into driving society. Those are the elements a good leader must possess. Okay. So Apart from that, you must have developed a good set of etiquettes and mannerisms that people who have to come around you to work with you must be able to buy from you. If you have been a cheat from your very early days, you went to primary school, you sat next to somebody, you cheated the answer, you write all the answer. Went to secondary school, you are stealing food from one of the other children that come. And these are the people surrounding you. And you are their leader. So what do you expect? Mm. All of you are the same. But if you have some awkwardness in you, people who want to work around you will sit, snake them out and make sure that fairly other people are the ones that are complimenting you. So that you can deliver. Hmm. Very good. So, in a nutshell, you have you've mentioned about three attributes that makes you a good leader. One, you're religious. Two, you're resourceful. Three, you have intellect. So, has there been any major contributions you've done to your society? I mean, to your constituency and people at large. Oh yes. Um, to a great extent, uh, in the, since the last election, uh, I've been trying to downplay uh, a lot of things. Uh, but in the past, um, there have been many societies where I've actually kind of had to sink balls. There are many schools where I sponsor okay. children, um, where I give them uniforms. There are parents who cannot afford to do uh, the basic things for their children. Responsible, either to provide light uh, we have provide solar power and some communities for them. And um, we have created goods uh, for some communities. For my immediate community, uh, we have created so many things uh, from within the private resources. Uh, and that's uh, how far you can go uh, unless you are in government, in which case you are using the common world to develop. Thank you very much. Those are laudable contributions you've given to the society, even from your private court. Thank you very much. Um, we'll go for a short break and we'll be right back. You're welcome back. The program is still one-on-one -on -one and my guest is still Elder Femi Olauri. Back to my question, it's, uh, are you still interested in running for parliament? Uh, very much, very, very much. Uh, the desire is to serve the people. And there's an inner conviction that the people need selfless leaders. Okay. And that's what's driving me in my quest to serve the people. Uh, at least at the Senate at the next level. Um, you see, until you get across the notion that you are for yourself alone, uh, you will not live a fulfilled life. Mm. I've done what a normal person my age would have done. Okay. Not, I don't feel fulfilled that I've not done it. And when you have abilities that are there waiting to be used, if you ignore them and don't use them, first you are held before your crew. Because the good thing there is that they can be used. Okay. So and that's what I want to call on to serve country. I want to serve strong. But in terms of duty and fairness, I'm fairly someone who is keen about giving more to more. But that's my philosophy. More to so more. more. All right. And that means you may have to develop those who don't have the capacity to hold more. Mm. 
or to attract you. For those who are already old, you have to be the one to enhance their capacity to give. To give. Most of those who are in position, they have so much, but they have not developed the capacity to give. To give but some take so much and bury it. That's not good. Mm. Very good. I think I love that. So now let's um, assume you are able to get to the Senate mentioned you wanted to go to the Senate and possibly beyond. What major reform, or should I say what major bill would you work on that is going to benefit the masses, especially people of your constituency? Uh, well, let me say this. Senate uh, is at the federal level. Yes. And um, under my own, there are nine other one of the key things for me, one of my key concerns, okay. is health. Okay, you think the health sector is health sector? It's one of my health. priority. Okay. One of my priorities. And in terms of that, I want to see enabling laws for primary health care. I recently came from the top of Japan and India and South Korea. Just as you have reduced churches within a hundred kilometers. Okay. That's what you have. A mini hospital, a dental center, an hospital center. Mm -hmm. It may be another 500 before you have a major hospital, but within every 100 to 200 kilometers, there's yeah. a medical center. Mm -hmm. Able to take primary ailments. And by which means the country will not be losing people who don't come to work just for mere headache. Small push too. All those minor things that they don't need to sit in the middle of the outpatient care, which is preventative in nature. We will have identified all these sudden deaths we have now and prevent them and make sure the life expectancy is higher. For now, the life expectancy in Nigeria just went up from 42 to 47. Whereas in some of these nations, the minimum now is about 85. So that is a major area where I would be looking for strong blocks to put that health, on the ground. The health sector. Yes. So is I'm, there any other area? I am concerned about youth employment. A good number of youths that have been turned out in the last 15 to 20 years just to hold the most recent are not employed. Not employed. Not employed. Because most of the skills they have don't match the industries available for them to work. Sure. You have the polytechnic that's turning out law graduates. You have an aquaculture institution that is meant to specialize in fishes and things like that. Now turning out graduates in poultry. How many portrait farms are there? Mm. Now you have the same allocation in terms of admission number. Business studies 200, aquaculture 300, the same numbers. But where are the industry to absorb all those who are going to do all these things? Mm -hmm. So they are not employed. Wow. You now need to ensure that there is a link between industry and the courses that the high institutions are providing. So that as they are getting out, there's something waiting for them. But you can't create so many graduates. What the supply is far, far in excess of the demand. Mm. In the time when we were coming out, in our time, we had the luxury that a year before you finish, at what is now the equivalent of OND, if you are stopping at OND, you already have a job. Yes. At least I was a beneficiary of that. Yes. And I had a car to mark that level. Three. Yes. At the graduate level, university level, the penultimate year they will have come to recruit you. All the courses match the graduates that are coming out. And there was a designed remuneration for you as you are getting out. That is what we need to go back to. So that we won't have people who have gone to spend some years studying and studying, racking their brain only to come out and find that the employer doesn't want them. Then they go back to crime. Because they must survive, they are adults. You must live one way or the other. And many of them that have not been 
opportunity to get good moral solution. Perhaps because they are orphans, perhaps because they are under one brain family. So they don't have anybody to let them see that a horrid life is a quick exit life. So they end up in prisons, they end up in rackets that consume them and waste them too early. They never see, most of them never see their 47, 48 birthday. Because society has not prepared them for being part of society. And to be a part of society, you must be gainfully employed. Very so good it's an area I want to go with enabling us to reshape things back to what it should be. All right. Thank you very much for that, sir. So now, which brings me to my second to the last question. Now, considering the fact that Nigeria has been seen as more corrupt under President Momodou Buhari led administration, this was stated in the Transparency International report. Do you think the president stands a chance of being re-elected, looking at um, corruption, insecurity, among other things? What? Um I want to, to rephrase the question and remove the name of Mr. President and put the name of our party. Then I can respond to you. Okay. Now rephrasing the question. Yes. Under the administration of all progressive Congress. Okay. That is more so that we don't personalize it. You know, Mr. President is head of government under the PC. Yes. And yes, is the de facto executive. And everything that happens in the party, good or bad, would be assigned to. Sure. So to a great extent, the enormity of the challenges that he met on ground and the speed of response have not matched one another. And that gives concern whether the electorate will give us the grace needed for a second time. So you think the party needs grace now for them to for it to be? Yeah, we need the grace of a second time. Uh, you see, the rot in the system has been there for 16 good years. Mm. And none of those regimes was free of all ills that you now see. In fact, that it becomes knowledge is an achievement. Really? Well, yes, that it becomes knowledge that this money is stolen, this money is sitting there, would not have been. For most of you who might have been in the system, you know what happened to the likes of Billy Gua? Because they wanted to put information that is critical to the society in the public, they were wasted. So, and many like that. If you remember one of the ministers who was for aviation, she was docked and she lost her sight because she was talking. So the fact that some information is coming out now and the level of repression is not as high, I think it's an achievement. But people cannot see that uh, benefit starts from the spiritual to the physical. Most of those are spiritual benefits. That for the first time, truth is now finding its way out. Okay. Little by little, the physical equivalence will fall. Okay. But people, are in a hole. Unfortunately, the masses are not enlightened enough to know the time it takes for many things that they want. You cannot want to build, for example, uh, an airport that will go billions and billions, that will need experts with about maybe 500 different professional colleagues. Mm. Now, to assemble them, to coordinate them, to get them to do their work, the airport might not be ready in about seven, eight years' time. Oh, they have started, they are not finishing. The masses that are fairly illiterate, they can't understand. And they are the one voting for them. Yes. And that's why the pattern of results follow their limited understanding of policies. Mm. All we can ask is for the grace, but for now, the noise is. Oh, nothing's has happened, nothing has happened. If for several years, all Nigerian food has been imported, that even the spoon that can be made here, people don't use them, 
that cotton wool that can be made here, people import. Mm. That toothpaste that is from all the trees here is imported. And for 16 years, I've discounted the military. Let's even mm. discount them. For the 16 years of the party before us, which has drained the foreign exchange, which has made us dependent on overseas producers. Will our industries not have been wrecked? When there is no demand for their products, when there is no employment for them to use local materials, now someone is working that up. He can't do all that just in three years. Mm. It can't take three years to do all that. So, in a nutshell, this is the foundation process. It is. So we need we need time that for place to come into for a second time. All right. And coming to your question, you know, I said talk about the party. Yes, you did. Why I said that is that the party will present someone else. Mm. Not as the moment, but okay. We're not anchoring those on Bari. It's not that there are so many good people. So long as the systems and procedures are there. And that is what made France to have a 31 year old to be their president because the systems and procedures are there and robust. If you bring an 18 year old, you'll be guided by those who are running all these institutions. He's just a coordinator, the central coordinator. He can't debate much from what has been put down. The 20 year plan is already there. He's just there as a coordinator. Okay. So, and that is what must go to. We must get to that point where all the systems are working the way they should work. And then anybody with a fair amount of knowledge will be guided by the experience of our children. Correct. Thank you very much. So, all progressive Congress needs a second chance. We need more than a second chance. But at least let <laughs> us have. Even a third chance. Let, we, 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 I mean, if you see the situation in Germany, they just gave their leader the fourth time. The same thing in Russia, fourth time fourth time in the developed country. Why? Because in those places, the abuse of power has been settled. Mm. If you misuse power against the people, you have to. Mm. But use the power for the people against external aggression, and that's why they are voting those people. It's not that they are not other better people. They see that, yes, they stand for the nation, and there's no oppression of their own people. Okay. So and that's why they are allowed to continue. So if they want to represent themselves again, because they stand for the nation, and the nation is standing, mm. they will continue to allow them. Uh, let me bring you to myself. All right, sir. By the time I carefully got up as being the president of my old students' association, I've served them more than five times. More than five times? Five times. So how many years does it take to serve a term? Three. Three years. So you And we are doctors, fit. we are doctors, engineers, people in high places. But I love it to continue. Mm. Because what they wanted was there. What they are not even thought of was always there. We are doing things. But one of the current senior people in government was my schoolmate. Wow. And they will be there, and I was still running. It was at one point I said, look, okay, I can stay at the back and guide some of you. And that's what I continue to do. So if you are good enough, people will not squabble because they know you have them in mind. You know you have the common good in mind. Then whoever can go, go. There is no common good. It's when people feel that they are not in your agenda that mm. they are the must be there, must be there, must be there. Mm. Once people are able to identify the leaders that put their welfare as critical, that to make sure that their livelihood is guaranteed, that to take a fallacy discussion towards them. I did some documents for the current government. I hope they will see light in the second government. I did a, a model for youth housing. Mm. I did a model for industrial action. There now. And I told Mr. President, I said, you have to go back to the fatherly notion of foreign mm. That You cannot father children, cannot want to see them work. Yeah. Not want to see them do well in their work. Sure. I said, you go back to that model as a father. Mm. And see the next generation, the next generation after you, see them standing. Which therefore means you conceive the idea. You get it implemented for them. You get them work it. I'm sure it will work after them. But when you continue to build out all these subsidies, left, right, and center, some people just pocket it. True. And then True. it does nothing. And then they come back and say, nothing is happening. Nothing will happen. Mm. You must be involved in the development of it. That is what people will continue to subscribe to. If you say you want to be there 20 years, once they see the inside of you, that you are for continue them, to support you. They will continue. And that's what people are wanting to discover. All right. Someone who has. Giving yourself for the development of the nation first above self and family. Mm. All right. To my final and um, last question, at what point will you say you're fulfilled?
field. I mean, you as a person, let's say politically and um, personally. Well, um, I want to link the two uh, because I've chosen politics as my retirement career. Okay. Uh, I've done the normal you can do in the normal working life. But I still have a lot of energy left. And my fulfillment will come when I've been able to emancipate the masses in the society. When I've been able to bring good life to the doorstep of many that would not have had the chance unless a good people created leader is on board. And you can't do that on your own until you come under the political system. And that's why I've got to be able to do that. To bring the best of opportunities to the masses, okay. to the less privileged, and at the same time guaranteeing good life for those who have distinguished themselves. You will not say because you want to do well for the masses and eliminate by wrong policies the medical doctor who has been running his private practice for several years and then you make conditions hard for them. Or the engineer who has been doing his own connections left, right, and center, and then you bring policies that will bring this business up now. Okay. But like I said, more for more is what I stand for. And I will fulfill it when I see the joy that my direct contribution can bring directly and indirectly to the lives of people. I have myself the idea of a country where all the roads and sparkling condition all over. All the roads and sparkling, sparkling condition. Not just yes. sparkling conditions all over. Great interconnectivity for commerce and trade. Every industrialization. Hmm. Intercultural relation. Okay. That is not forced. That is caused by willful migration. Development here and there that people want to go and copy and settle into. Then you have created a society that is the dream of other nations. And people want to come. And Nigeria now becomes a tourist attraction. Not a place where the young ones, the energy of the nation, run away in their groups every day. And their brain they never come back. Mm. And they just want to escape. I still cancel a few of them and say, please, Oga, if I see this tomorrow, I'm that bye bye forever. He said forever. <laughs> forever. I said forever. Yes. You won't go to forever. That's me goodbye. So for people like that, I met one when I went on this journey to Japan. And the woman told me, I don't know the way to my family. I said, what he said? I've been outside now 37 years. I said, what he said? I've never gone home. That's and she's heading a major institution in America. A lady. She said, I've never gone back home. We are losing so much. And it takes someone with the passion to develop the nation to bring them back. They will come if they see that what is there is at home as well. And we have resources. It's just for someone ready to sacrifice his own personal expectations to for fulfillment. You are fulfilled when you live in the hands of so many people. Because directly and indirectly you have taught them. Thank you very much. We'll go for a short break. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. My guest has been a leader in person of Elda Femi or Lowry. Now I'm going to leave you with a food for thought. The best way to lead people is to walk behind them. I am Tolu Lokwedada. See you some other time.